Exhaust. So this used to be an impulse exhaust. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, and I called it the Frankenstein of exhaust because my friend decided to cut it. And uh, when we couldn't come up with anything, we said, you know what, we're just gonna put this exhaust. <laughs> Guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I don't have the. Uh, it's audible, but I have Gen Kicks over here, right? That's Gen Kicks, yes. Okay, so Gen Kicks, uh, why don't you tell us what have you done with your impulse? Um, well, nothing much uh, right now. It's just a basic Charisma engine swap. Um, some aftermarket uh, handlebars. Uh, I think the only uh, funny, interesting thing would be if you can come here. Is this uh, really old exhaust. So this used to be an impulse exhaust. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, and I called it the Frankenstein of exhaust because my friend decided to cut it. And uh, when we couldn't come up with anything, we said, you know what, we're just gonna put this exhaust system on it. So it's not really a system, but uh, we are making do with it. We are obviously gonna change it later. But have you made any uh, free flow arrangements in the exhaust or is it still stock? It's one of the Jugard free flow exhaust right now. Why don't you start it up? I want to hear how it sounds. Get the camera here. Exhaust sounds good. What's up with the engine? Why is the black smoke? Uh, that's as I said. So uh, it's still a work in progress. We are trying to refine it. Uh, the first phase was getting the engine in, getting the body on, getting you know try to get it functional, get it running. And now the tuning is where we look forward, where we're standing at. Okay, so it's got a Charisma engine with reference to the carburetor. Is it a Charisma carburetor, NS carburetor, Pulsar 220 carburetor, or Impulse carburetor? Charisma carburetor. Oh, you've kept the Charisma carburetor. Okay. So this is my personal experience. I have an NS carburetor. The initial is good, but the top end sucks. My friend has a Charisma carburetor. Initial is not that good, but the mid and top is really good. So if at all you use this for highway rides, it's going to be amazing, but if you use it for off-roading, it may not be that good, but obviously you can always fine-tune it. Absolutely. How do you get a, a, a Charisma carburetor? Apart from it being expensive, it's non-existent. How did you manage that? Um, so the guy that built the bike, he kind of sourced it. He, uh, he, had, he knew this dude who had this last piece left. I think that's the story with most guys. They had like last the last piece. car left. Uh -huh. And this guy was like, hey, I want it. And he called me, he was like, hey, this is what it's like. And this is what it's going to cost. I said, go for it. What can we do? How expensive was it? I think the hobby is expensive. No, but it, <laughs> hobby is extremely expensive. So it was, I, I don't know, it's subjective. I think I paid around six, six between five six. and six, somewhere around that. Okay, that's good. You paid less than what I paid, but that's a good thing. I still have my Charisma carburetor. Now I'm thinking of putting the Charisma carburetor back. But again, I'm still uh, figuring out with the NS carburetor how good or bad can it get. So that's where I am at. I Now that the bike's running, I'm going to try a couple of things. I'm going to try a different carb. Um, not sure about the exhaust, whether you know it's going to stay, we're going to tune this or make a new one. But let's see right now, it's work in progress. That's what I can say. We'll do one thing. I'm exiting in 15-20 minutes. So you can ride my bike. You can see the feel of an NS carb. Again, as I mentioned, I have to still fine-tune it. The problem with our hobby is you have generic mechanics. Yes. They don't know how to tune it. And especially a bike like mine that has three different bike parts in one bike, tuning it is a bitch. So I found someone that will get tuned, but you'll have a good idea on the NS carburetor. We'll do a separate video over there. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So this is a Gen 1 Hero Honda uh, engine. Not the Hero Honda Z. Yes, this is a Gen 1. Okay, this is a Gen 1. So this is a 17.5 horsepower one. 16.8. 16.8 okay still good enough it's fun I mean, it's it's still considerably better than the impulse yes because you get an impulse you say you want to go do a big block i think people should do it if they want to go 180 uh, people say a charisma engine is front heavy i kind of like it when i'm riding especially on the road if i want to kind of as we say spirited riding i 
find a little more confidence because of that little weight. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm good with this engine. I always had this thing for a Charisma engine growing up. And when people said, hey, you can do this warp, I said, I think that's what I'm going to do. I love the suspension. I love the body, the way the impulse handles, but it just didn't have enough power. I think that's what all of us complain about. Exactly. So no, that was the main problem. And more importantly, because this engine is based on the CRF 230, mm. there are a lot of aftermarket parts that are available. You got to source them, yeah. but you get like um, different heads, cams. So the potential for tuning with a Charisma engine is a little higher. That's what I feel. I could be wrong, but I just feel that yes, there is there is way more research that's done out there in Thailand and stuff. You can just recall these guys and they have, have the setup ready. You know what you need. You know, I've done research and I figured out if I spend this much, I will as buy a 310 GS from BMW because it goes up to three and a half. I don't. I you know I'm actually scared to know how much I've invested in my bike. Because I'm pretty sure I could have bought a Expert Rally ke edition. Oh yeah. yeah. Pe hai. yeah. But I'm like, you know what? You need to pay a price for something that looks different. Yes. No one stares at Experts, but everyone feels our bikes look important. <laughs> now, one thing that I don't know, I personally may dislike is why do you cut the fins? I mean, it's like a shark without fins, right? I mean, so I'll that, tell you. that is what differentiates the exp Impulse from Experts. So when I saw your bike, I thought it's an Experts. Then I was like, okay, this is actually an impulse. The reason is very simple. Um, the XR series, all of the Honda XRs, that's how the tank looks. Kind of, kind of. Okay. And I eventually, I'm going to change the side panels to an XR panel, get a rare mudguard, which will be an uh, XR mudguard. So eventually, I wanted to look as close as possible to an XR, given the fact that it doesn't really have a radiator. I'd rather go with a classic look than trying to make it look more modern. I don't know, I'm just maybe old at heart, I'm not sure. But mm. that's more or less the reason. The whole XR, the color scheme also comes from there, the blue and the red. Yeah, 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 um, I can see that. I went back and forth with the color scheme, thinking I'll do this, I'll do that. Finally, I was, you know what, chuck it, Honda. Let's just go for that and get that done. Yeah, you have the Honda red. That's a good thing. Yeah. Gotcha. Also, you have the KTM, Honda CRF. Yes. Again, exactly my bike. So that's a good thing, at least for me. You put the KTM, um, uh, what do you call, um, a footrest as well? Uh, yes, that's again the guy that built it, uh, Zishan. I, when it came to these things, I said go ahead and you do your thing. Uh, because he has rally and motocross experience. So he's pretty sorted when it comes to setting up the bike in a lot of senses. Uh, like, just go for it. Okay. How much have you approximately spent on your bike? Okay. 150? Well, like yeah, but I'll yeah, but I'll be very honest. Um, I had a whole charisma. I didn't have just the engine. So that was like 30. So I think that's why the cost kind of went up a little bit. But yeah, 1.5, 150 is what we are looking at approximately. Okay, okay. You painted the chassis silver. That's something good. Same as my bike. You know what? Why don't I get my bike just for a side to side comparison? Let's do that. Okay, so you can see the similarities over here with reference to the headlight, with reference to the mudguard. Aren't you placing this? I am. I was actually talking to him. I, was, I actually was talking to him. I was like, hey, I need to get one of these guards. Because yes, we know in off-roading dirt, you got to protect hmm. as many components as possible. Because the intention is to go out there and thrash these bikes. Okay, so I'll tell you one thing. Even if you buy this, you cannot install it unless you know the person who can install it. So this is a guy in Andheri, I'll help you with his number. Javed. The, you, know, you know the 2.5 lakh modification impulse that I made? Was in his garage. Yes, yes. So, you actually have to go to him and get this done. I think I have an extra plate, I can give it to you. So it's not about buying this. Getting it from Kurla is the easy part. Finding a guy who can install it. Because there was another guy in town who used to and he stopped it. So after a lot of research, I finally found someone who can actually do this. 
makes sense. I think I'm going to go to that guy and get it done. Uh, so then, uh, this is what it is. Uh, again, there's a lot of similarities. Silver or uh, chasey. The only problem with silver is it kind of gets dirty, but you got to clean it. And uh, I think your uh, rear tail is also pretty decent. If you can come here. Which one is this? Uh, I think I got it from um, I, either one of these places. I don't want to take their names because I'm not sure which one it was. This is one of those generic ones. I had it on the Charisma. Uh, this is gonna go. This is gonna probably turn into like a CRF, uh, Fender or something on those lines. Okay. But for now, as a temporary fix to keep things legal, as illegal as possible, that is. This is why it's here. Okay. The reason I've kept this is because it still looks different. The only problem is now my exhaust is so up that this is basically just exhaust uh, smoke. It's kind of blacked out but uh, still good enough. Cool, so what we'll do, I'm anyways exiting. Why don't you ride my bike, you see how the NS carburetor feels. And then if at all you want to spend on an NS carburetor, that'll be our informed decision. Cool, let's go out. And you guys, a very, very good morning. Before we go ahead and announce something nice with all our friends. Even if you have the money, foreign bikes are bike. just a pain in us. I mean, unfortunately, they are. They, they, are, they do. They are. Pain. They have crazy power. I've ridden the KTM 450. Oh my God, it's like three impulse engines together. That much power, but again. <laughs>